evening, comrade. Welcome to Soviet Collector Corner. Sorry, you guys. I apologize for my very, very poor Russian accent, or whatever country that even sounded like it came from. Today, we're going over this wonderful little gem that I came across recently, and this is a Makarov PM pistol. This one having to be in an East German version. Now, they made these in several different countries. They made these in Russia. They made these in East Germany, of course. And they made them in, Roma in uh, Bulgaria as well. There's always been rumors, and China, there's always the Type 59, which is rarely, rarely seen. I have not seen one in a long time. Uh, now, these were the, the Cold War Soviet Communist Era handgun. They is the AK-47 was synonymous with the rifle. The Makarov PM was the pistol of the Soviet Cold War countries. Yes, there were a few offshoots. You know, you had the Polish guns. Uh, you had the Hungarian PA-63, which is not as good a gun as this. Uh, the caliber is the same. This is an all-steel frame. That's an alloy frame. That gun was not designed to be shot consistently all the time. That's a gun that even, most collectors even tell you carried a lot, shot little. It'll work, but it won't hold up reliability-wise over time like the Makarov PM will. Now, this gun was originally East German Police. It came with a holster. The black holster is East German Police. The white holster is Traffic Police, and brown is Army. Um... Is the original holster of the gun, from what I've been told, yes. This gun was imported a long time ago. There's very small import markings on it, very few, only on one side, not down the front of the grip like typical East German guns are. Uh, this gun has been through a couple of hands here and ended up in mine. Those are not the original grips on it. I've got to get some uh, original East German grips for the gun. These are not bad. They had the thumb rest on them, which the imports, a lot of them early on, had these god-awful thumb rest grips on, and whoever had these was smart enough to dremel off and sand off the thumb rest, which it actually makes it better. I've seen these grips before on other Macross, and they're, they're just hideous. Anyways, back to the gun. It's in 9mm, 9x18mm Makarov. Now, many people will tell you that that's not as good as a 9mm Luger. It's not. It doesn't have the power of a 9mm Luger, but it's not bad. For a smaller gun like this, it's not bad at all. It's better than a 380. Uh, can you shoot 380 through this gun? No, don't try it. Can you shoot 9mm Luger through this gun? You'll do it one time, then you won't have the gun anymore to worry about it. 9mm Makarov is a wider diameter than 9mm Luger. It's 355 versus 363 for the Makarov. Better bullet, like 95 grains, runs more than a thousand feet per second in most cases. For its gun, for the size of the gun, for the gun itself, it's not bad. But the thing about these guns isn't so much the caliber, it's the reliability. These guns with the blowback action, fixed barrel, are notorious for being reliable. That was the secret to this design. There's 28 parts in this gun. That's it. 28 parts. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this out a little bit, and I'm going to go into a little bit more history with this gun and the design of the gun, and we'll get back from that. Now, one thing is, too, is you'll hear me sometimes pronouncing Makarov. I'm, I'm mispronouncing it. The, the real pronunciation is Makarov. That's how it should be pronounced. I mispronounce it all the time. Don't worry. 90-some-odd 90, 90 percent of people do. It's Makarov. That's the correct, correct, can, excuse me, correct pronunciation for that. It's Makarov. But let me go through and I'll give you some quick history on this gun and then we'll get back to you. If the Luger and the Walther P-38 were synonymous with German forces during World War I and World War II and the Colt 1911 with American forces during World War II, then the Makarov PM is synonymous with Soviet-era Cold War forces. It was introduced in 1951 as a replacement for the Tokarov TT-33 pistol and stopped production in the Soviet Union in 1991 
shortly before the fall of the Soviet regime although it still saw service in many Cold War countries after the fall of the Soviet Union. In East Germany, the pistol was adopted in 1958 and stopped production in 1965, although it saw service up until the, Cold, the Berlin Wall fell and even afterwards. The Bulgarians made their own version as well, as did the Chinese with the Type 59. There has always been rumors of a Cuban Makarov, even though the Cuban forces used Makarov PM, rumors have swirled that it was a production version made by the Cubans under license from the Soviets, although one has never been seen. The Cubans did use the Makarov PM, but were they Soviet produced guns or were they under license? There's always been rumors of a Romanian Makarov PM, but that again has never been seen. To this day, the Makarov PM is still being used by many former Soviet and Cold War countries. Its reliability, an 8-round magazine, and 9mm Makarov round make it very popular. So again, of all the countries that I've mentioned, nothing, nothing says more about the Soviet regime as far as an issued handgun than the Makarov PM. It was in the Empire as long as the Empire stood following World War II. With the Cold War, nothing stood out more than the Makarov PM handgun in the holsters of the border guards at the Berlin Wall or from one Soviet country to another when you traveled through and you were asked for your papers. The handgun was ultra-reliable has been reliable for many years, well known for being a very de decent handgun as far as protection. Okay, good, you're back with us. Now, why did I get this gun? I really wasn't looking for another handgun, and I really didn't need another concealed carry gun, Or and that's, this gun is going to be a concealed carry gun, trail gun, woods gun, whatever I, whatever I feel like it to be. I really didn't need another one, but I looked at it, and I've, I like the design before. Now, this gun, the Walther, this is basically a copy of the Walther PPK. The Soviets took the Walther and said, nice gun, we can make it better. And that's exactly what they did. And it, it depends on your definition of better. What they did do is make it simpler. Typical blowback design, very, very, you know, rigid barrel which is inherently accurate with these little guns. These little guns are notorious for their accuracy. And they took the gun and said, all right, we can really simplify this because this, with the Soviet guns, they took their guns and said, all right, we're going to hand this gun to the simplest person, maybe not well-educated, a peasant, a farmer, who has now joined the military, one of these backwoods police departments, and something like that, and that's what they did. They made these guns simple, just like the AK-47 is simple, this is simple. The Soviets were wonderful with that. But the, why are the guns even so popular here? Because they're a wonderful concealed carry gun. Uh, now this gun in particular, again, this is an East German gun, which is more desirable than the Bulgarians. It's even money if it's more desirable than the Russian guns now, because the Russian guns, the military guns at least, are getting hard to find, and their prices are going up. But this gun, the gun shop had it for a while. It's been through a few hands, and I got it for three and a half, for three fifty, out the door with the holster, two mags, and and a box of ammo, box of fifty rounds. I've been told, and I've seen them online go for four, five hundred, or better. Some of these guns go more because this gun doesn't have all the import markings as most of them do. It's all numbers matching, and I believe this gun was an earlier gun. Like I said, this is a German police gun. You know the black for, the black holster is the PD for you know German police the East German police. The white is the traffic police and the brown is the military. Again, hundred percent sure this was original to the gun. No, it's not numbers matching on the holster, but you know it, it's a nice it's a nice gun. But again, for a concealed carry gun, this gun is excellent. It's very reliable. I could. You know, it is a little big for a pocket. Depends on your pockets. I can carry this in a pocket with no problem. The one thing, the biggest issue with this gun, again, is the heel magazine, as I've said before. And some people don't like them. 
they just I I have no issue with the heel magazine. It's not that bad. It just takes getting used to. I've had many European handguns as I've said before. Not that big of a deal. At least to me. It takes getting used to. If you're not used to it, you've got to get used to it. But again, I'm, you know, that's this is me. The secret behind the Makarov is that it just works. It's a good caliber. It was one of those guns for because you look at the other military handguns that have come out over the years that were issued to frontline troops. It's not a big handgun. Not even for caliber size, but size wise. Look, you put this gun next to a 1911, it's not that big. You put this gun next, especially next to something like a Beretta, you know, a Beretta night, you know, Beretta 92, which granted that gun came out in 85. But these guns were still in use by the communists and by the Soviet era, you know, countries. It's it's tiny compared to a Beretta, you know, the Beretta M9, and other military countries. But this gun just works. It's not a big gun. It's not an overly heavy gun. It was like, well, gee, it's all steel frame. If you're used to carrying a polymer frame gun all the time, then oh god, it's steel frame. It weighs twenty some odd ounces. Twenty some odd ounces really isn't that much. And yeah, you do get used to it. I've carried a lot heavier guns, and I've noticed a lot less on my hip than something like this. But, again, that's the secret to the Makarov. It just works. It's a reliable gun. It's it's one of these guns, and I personally, I cannot wait to shoot this gun. That's I'm hoping this week, if things go well, and the weather's decent, I want to get out and I want to shoot this gun. Just because, it, you know, the accuracy, the stories of the accuracy that I hear about these and what I have seen for this little gun the short barrel fixed sights you know it's double action single action and you hear well it's got a horrible trigger pull compared to what? compared to the Hungarian PA-63 it's a joy the double action pulls somewhere three to four to five pounds better than that I've not messed with the the Polish guns but the Polish P-64 which is a wonderful concealed carry handgun out of the box, however, the P64 has an atrocious double action trigger pull. It's something around the neighborhood of, it's, it's off the charts. You hear guys saying it's 17 to 20 pounds. Now you can get springs to lighten that and make it better, but this gun will still have a better trigger pull than that, at least double action. The single action with the P64 tends not to be that bad. It's just a bit of a longer trigger pull. I don't have a, a trigger pull gauge to measure this, but I can tell you the double action pull is, is very nice. It's very smooth. The single action trigger pull on this gun is outstanding. And another thing that comes up with this gun a lot, some people tell you it's not safe to carry. Well, why isn't it safe to carry? Well, because it's got a free-floating firing pin. And if you drop it, it might go off. There's a secret to that. It's called doing this. There's your safety right there. Now... Now, the state of California lets these guns in, at least the Bulgarians. They did their drop test. In the state of California, the gun has to be dropped repeatedly, upwards of 200 times, on a live round to see if it'll go off. It did not. The, the Bulgarian PM is, is allowed in the state of California. Considering the list of guns that are not allowed in the state of California, I would certainly say this is a safe handgun. The biggest thing is that people did not carry it with the safety on. That safety blocks that hammer. It's very, it's very simple. It's also a decocker, but it's one of the easiest I've ever used. That is probably one of the most positive of safeties you can think about. Again, the gun's not loaded. There's no magazine in it. But it's very simple. The sights, while simple, are very, very nice sights for what this gun is. Uh, I'm, it's surprising how easy you can pull this gun up and pick those sights up. You wouldn't think to look at it until you've actually had one of these in your hands. So, that's kind of the history on the Makarov PM. It's a, this again, this is the East German version. Which version is best? That depends on who you talk to. You hear that the East German guns were better manufactured. Uh, I've seen people take them all apart and th th all the parts are identical. Now, I think the bluing is better. I think the finish is better on the East German gun. I will say that. Um, as far as everything else, would I pass up a Bulgarian Makarov for, for the right price? Absolutely not. 
Will I pass up a Russian? Absolutely not. I'm not a huge fan of the mil of the commercial Russian guns. Not because I don't think their quality is as good. I don't like the the, the dressing up of a military gun with adjustable sights, which I, they under they had to do that to get them in this country because they wouldn't follow under Curio and Relic, so they had to throw adjustable sights on them, which is why you see them on the on the commercial Russians. I'm not a huge fan of that. To me, that, that adjustable rear sight doesn't really do it. This gun was not meant for that. This gun was meant for being a simple, rugged handgun. The more working parts you throw on a handgun like that, that's just another thing that can go wrong with it. You know, that's like the magazines. You hear people say, because the magazines have the open sides like these do. Well, they get their, their dirt will get in there. There's torture test video after torture test video on YouTube showing these guns, the guns in the sand, the guns in the mud. They, they bury the magazines, then load the magazines up, and yeah, it's gritty, but it still works. So, there you again, there again, folks. So that was just, this is just a quick overview of my, uh, my latest thing, the East German Makarov PM, and the Makarov PMs in general. Look for look for more on this gun because this gun is going to get some some use. I've I've really kind of liked this gun to the point where I don't know how much I'm going to carry it, but I can pretty much say it's going to get carried a lot. So, with that being said, folks, have a good day or das Badani, as they say, say over in the former country. You know, and you know, keep your head up about the election coming up. Um, I'm hoping to have a quick video on that, but I'm not sure if I'll have time before the actual event. So, with that being said, YouTube, have a good day.